Far out in the South Pacific, a thousand miles north of New Zealand, the long swells burst on the reefs of Tonga. Once a port of call for wandering Yankee whalers, this island group lies apart from regular trade routes. So for centuries, its people have been relatively isolated, with only occasional visitors and a small trade in copra and bananas. But times are changing in Tonga. New markets for copra and bananas have opened in Asia. There is a Tongan merchant marine with modern vessels built in Europe. The plains will bring more and more tourists to the friendly islands. More and more islanders will leave to study in other countries. Under the leadership of Her Majesty Queen Salote and Prince Tungi, the Prime Minister, Tonga's relative isolation is disappearing. The native government has been at once prudent and progressive. Its benevolent rule has brought prosperity without destroying traditional customs. Looking forward to the expansion of trade, the government carefully considered the effect of increased contact with the outside world. It was realized that there was a very definite and growing threat to the Tongan people. The population was totally unprotected against smallpox, and smallpox is a disease which is rampant throughout Southeast Asia. This was Tonga's problem, to vaccinate a highly vulnerable population of 70,000 against smallpox, to do it effectively, to do it immediately, to do it inexpensively. The party came to Tonga in March of 1964 in response to a request by the Tongan government. There were five of us from the U.S., four physicians and an equipment specialist. We were going to evaluate a new, rapid and inexpensive means of giving smallpox vaccinations. Working together with a team of Tongan medical personnel, we would begin immediately in Nukalofa, the capital city, population 20,000. We plan to immunize everyone in Nukolofa within a few days. The instrument that would make it possible, the jet injector gun. This device can deliver injections as fast as you can pull the trigger. The gun is simple to operate and you're sure of getting the proper amount of vaccine under the skin. The gun is operated by a foot pedal. You press the pedal and then pull the trigger. This model is equipped with a new feature an intradermal nozzle for giving injections into the superficial layers of the skin as you must with smallpox vaccine. The gun is completely portable. The whole package weighs 12 pounds. Knowing that something would have to be done to get the populace interested in the immunization drive, we had prepared some informational material, films and posters telling about smallpox and the importance of vaccination. We delayed most of the actual planning until after we arrived. Our Tongan associates worked with us closely. They were very eager to help, and we could not have gone far without their excellent advice and assistance. From the very beginning and throughout our stay, we were given a courteous and friendly reception. The first evening, we were the guests of Prince Tungi. The prince had personally flown to Atlanta, Georgia, in February of 1964 to discuss the problem of immunizing his people against smallpox. At the Communicable Disease Center, he met with public health service officers at the smallpox unit. It was a propitious meeting, for the unit had just completed its study of intradermal vaccination with a new gun developed by the Army. And the most suitable place in the world for an evaluation of this new method was Tonga, a progressive country with a small, intact population and no history of smallpox. During the prince's visit to the center, we had photographed him getting his smallpox vaccination. This film was to be shown everywhere we went to encourage those who would be reluctant. The 
people enjoyed it immensely. The next morning, the vaccination drive began. The posters with our message were put up in New Kualofa. Smallpox is a dread disease. Vaccination prevents smallpox. Every effort was made to inform the people about the vaccinations and where they could go to get them. It did not take long for them to understand that this was being done for their protection, and they cooperated wholeheartedly. One of the things we immediately realized was the importance of getting the local people to help. The teacher knows her pupils. She's the best one to reassure them, to keep track of them. This laboratory technician checks the children for skin rashes or lesions. We taught them our methods, and they performed many of the vaccinations themselves. The Tongans took care of the administrative work, and their cooperation was invaluable. We were accomplishing a lot more than just an immunization drive. We were sharing medical and public health knowledge and experience. children were curious, not altogether eager for the vaccination, but well behaved. They were expecting something unpleasant. One look at the gun and they were sure it was going to be unpleasant. But the gun is painless, it just looks a little unfriendly. We used a dose of 110 cc of vaccine, diluted 50 to 1 here. In some other places we used a 10 to 1 dilution for comparison. Acetone was used to swab the arm. It dries faster than alcohol and prevents the intradermal head from slipping on the skin. Prince Tungi's daughter took her vaccination along with the others. Then downtown where we took care of the government workers, policemen, and nurses. For the rest of the week, we went around Nukulofa setting up at convenient locations and processing thousands of people a day. After this, we went out into the countryside of the main island where we attended a once-year event, the field day for all the high schools. It's quite an occasion, a major sports attraction. When he was younger, Prince Tungi held the pole bowling championship for 20 years. The Tongans are a strong, healthy people. They have no problem with heart disease, malaria, yellow fever, or cholera. took advantage of the field day to vaccinate people in the crowd. We vaccinated about 1,000 people that day. At night, we were busy centrifuging blood samples, going over records, and periodically disassembling and cleaning the gun. A remarkable instrument, a tremendous amount of time and money was being saved. First, smallpox vaccine is expensive. With a gun, you can dilute it 50 times. That's 50 shots for the price of one. Second, the conventional method of vaccination, pricking concentrated vaccine into the skin, requires trained and experienced people. Not so with a gun. In addition, the gun virtually eliminates the sterilization problems present in the manual method. All you have to do with a gun is to sterilize the internal parts. It's then ready to administer thousands of consecutive doses. After three and a half weeks on the main island, we divided up into three teams. One team remained on the main island to assess the results of the vaccinations. The two other teams went to the northern and central groups of islands to continue the immunization program. We went from island to island on a fish collection boat owned by the government. 
and used to collect and refrigerate the scattered catches from Tongan fishermen. These boats are the only means of getting from one place to another. We were out for three and a half weeks doing a population of 10,000 people in the Central Island groups. And this was the smallest number of people, but it took us the longest time because of the distance we had to travel. For carrying our equipment from village to village, we used a little vehicle which was called the Tote Goat. It was an attraction in itself. We went to two or three islands a day. Each evening, we were the guests in a different village. With us were a team of Tongans who were part of the medical department. There was a dentist, the chief medical officer, and other personnel who utilized this trip to conduct their normal medical calls around them. In addition to giving protection against smallpox to the people of the outer islands, we were evaluating the effectiveness of the diluted vaccine and the jet injector gun. To do this, we vaccinated a certain number of people the conventional way, using the multiple pressure technique. We would later be able to compare the results of both methods and determine the amount of protection various dilutions of the vaccine were giving. We made two visits to each island, once to give the injection and the other to check the reactions two weeks later. from our boat in a dugout canoe, somewhat loaded down, but with a comfortable two inches to spare. You can't truly appreciate the significance of the work done here without considering the millions still unprotected against smallpox. We succeeded in immunizing 80% of the available population of Tonga. We did it faster, far less expensively, and more effectively than would have been possible with standard manual techniques. The results were read. The vaccine had taken. 98.4% had satisfactory vaccinations, consistently better than expected. An unparalleled success when you consider that it was carried out by such a small team. Also, by observing a large population after its first smallpox vaccination, we gained valuable scientific information about immunity. a lot of knowledge and experience, but perhaps most important of all, Tonga and the United States accomplished together something of great promise to the world. For what was achieved here on this small Pacific island can be achieved to all peoples.